Good evening. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Pastor Mike White of the Refuge Church. And uh, we've been studying in the book of Romans and uh, gleaning what we can from uh, the book that Paul wrote to them. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to continue. Uh, it's been a great day, beautiful day outside. The weather has been fantastic. Uh, the goodness of God just abounds uh, all around us. We just got to notice it and uh, take hold of it and meditate uh, upon his goodness and his word and what he is doing for us in this life and look for opportunities to do good uh, around us and to the people around us to do good to them, to show the goodness of God that he has shown in our life. And uh, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We are seated uh, in heaven as Jesus is, so are we. And he is seated on the right hand of the Father. He is seated and he is at rest. And that's one thing. I listened to a message today. Uh, we are at rest. After uh, he created Adam, uh, the first thing that he did was rest, but the first thing Adam did was rest. And so we must rest in him and what he has for us and, and uh, the word that he has uh, for us uh, today and every day that he has a, a rhema word, a fresh word uh, for you and I to speak to us as we go uh, along. Life gets busy sometimes. You just got to pull the reins in and just uh, get along with him and meditate. Uh, on his word and commune with him and talk with him and he will with you and he will speak to you uh, and so we uh, finished up Romans chapter 1 and we started in Romans uh, chapter 2 now in Romans chapter 1 we left off and it was a talking about uh, uh, people with People that were filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, uh, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And he continues on. There's no break in the original writing, but he continues on. He says, therefore, thou art in inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art, that judgest. For when thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance? And so he's talking about, and here he's talking uh, to the Jewish people uh, that are uh, judging another. And that word judge there means to try, condemn, punish, avenge, conclude, damn, decree, determine, call in question, or sentence. Uh, and so he's uh, telling them uh, why do you condemn uh, uh, punish avenge all this to another he says uh, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things God judges sin Im impartially and he doesn't We'll get into this just in a minute, but uh, if we were still under the old law, sin, uh, punishment was dead. And so the people that were under the law were uh, condemned to death because they were judged by the law. And so they were put to death. Uh, 
Uh, now we see people uh, sinning, sinning openly, doing whatever they want. And a lot of people says, oh, don't judge me. You know, well, uh, we're not condemning the person. Uh, it's sin that is, you know, it's sin in their life that's uh, destroying them. Uh, when sin is finished, it brings forth death. Uh, and so you see this all the time, especially on social media, things going on and uh, people that aren't living, uh, aren't living a, a good way, living in sin and living in sin means you're missing the mark. Uh, you're not living uh, to the best that God has for you. I've always thought that was the problem. You see, I, I used to know best. I used to know what was best for me and I used to know what best for everybody else. And so uh, you look at that and you go, well, I know what's best. But when you come to know God and his nature and his character and his word and the Holy Spirit guides you into the truth, then you see, I didn't know what was best. I didn't know what was good for me. I didn't know uh, what was excellent uh, for me in my life. And so he shows us these things. And now you, you have to, you, you, should, you don't have to, you should want to live this way. You should want to live the way that the word of God says to live because this is where love, joy, peace, and all of the fruits of the spirit come in when you're living and walking in that. Because I always said this, Jesus, uh, you know, he came to earth, became a man, was born of a virgin. He grew up and he knew the best way to live. And he lived a good life, a uh, joyous life, and uh, he went around doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And he always wanted to do what pleased the Father. And so uh, he showed us an example of how we should live down here, how to live uh, the best life possible down here. And not only it's, it's not a selfish thing, but it's something to show people uh, that there is another kingdom that we are living in and then and we're part of this kingdom that he has brought to us through the holy ghost and we live in this kingdom uh with this kingdom mindset uh here upon this earth that is ruled by satan we live in in god's kingdom down here and it operates different from the kingdom of this world when there's uh, confusion and chaos going on in the kingdom there's peace and and, and contentment in the, in the kingdom of God. These are those things because this kingdom is inside of us. And uh, so it, it rules our life. And that's why Paul could be in prison and still sing at midnight and give praises unto God because he knew that he's in a different kingdom. Yeah, he's physically, uh, geographically, he was in a jail cell. But in his uh, spirit, he was in the kingdom and he was right where he needed to be. And he was with, with God and God was with him and, and the foundations of the prison shook and the bars flew open. And you know, if it was wanted out, if Paul just wanted out of that, he could have ran out and said, I'm free. God set me free. But when the jailer came in, he said, do thyself no harm. We're all here. Paul didn't get up and leave. He stayed there. Why? Because the kingdom was within him. He was at peace, even though he had stripes laid on his back and he was in uh, the cold, dark Roman prison, a dungeon, if you may. And he was locked up and, and waiting to, to be judged the next day. And, and so, but he was at peace in himself more than he had ever been. See, he had been angry. He had been violent. He had been murderous. He had hatred and all these things. And he called himself a, a holy man. He called himself a Pharisee, a, a, a man of the word, uh, if you may. And, and he knew all these things. So, and he wanted to condemn anybody that didn't hold right to the law. You see, the thing is, you know, it, it's not when people, you know, tell people, say, you know, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be living like that. That's not the best for you. That's, that's not right. 
you should, you should live it. They think you're trying to control them and trying to, you know, but the thing is with sin today, people that are living in sin and open sin, they, it's not enough that they just, you know, I'm going to live my life the way I want to. It's that they want you to accept it and they want you to uh, affirm them. That's a word they use a lot. We, we want affirmed. And I see on Facebook a lot that people are looking for a uh, LGBTQ uh, affirming church that they can go to and worship in. Uh, they want to be affirmed in their lifestyle. And so they ought to add some more letters to that. A, uh, adulterous, uh, F, fornicators, M, murderers, L, liars. Uh, <laughs> all, they ought to add all these things uh, to that and say, we want a, a church that confirms us, affirms us in this. But the word of God don't, affirm our sin it it come it tells us about a god who sent his son uh to come get us out of this you see we quote john three sixteen for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life but we're going to look at john three seventeen. it says for god sent not his son he sent his son in the world uh, that through him we could be saved. But he sent him not into the world to condemn the world. And judge means con condemn. He said, so he didn't send him in to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Do what? He that believes on him is not condemned. What do I have to be to not be condemned? Believe on him. Believe on the Son of God. But he that believeth not is condemned already. You see, you come out of condemnation by believing on the Son of God. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. He said, this is the problem. That light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. You see, a lot of them wish that Jesus never come, that there was no God. And that's what they say. Well, there, there is no God. I, I don't believe in a God. Or they, like we read in Romans 1, they change the truth of God in a lie. And that's why they want an affirming church, somebody that will come in and affirm them and uh, tell them, well, have your living is, is okay. No, no, it's, it, it's not okay. You're missing the mark. You're missing what... Uh, God has for you. And you people say, well, I can live however I want to and still uh, be a believer in Jesus Christ. That's not right because if you're a believer in Jesus, then you believe his teachings, you believe his word. And this goes deeper than just, you know, people that try to live in sin. This goes for religious people, uh, that religious people that want to just, uh, be stooped in the law and stuff and religion, it, it goes deeper, you know, than just uh, those people that are trying to live in sin. It, it, it goes deeper than that. Uh, but we got to believe the Word of God because if you're a believer, you believe what the Word says. That's why you're called a believer. Well, I believe in Jesus Christ. I, I just don't go to church. I just don't do what the Bible says. Well, then are you a believer? Because if you believe on Jesus Christ, then you're going to believe what he said. And he told us how to hit the mark. He gave us power over sin and over the devil and over all these things. And so we ought to be using that because he didn't come to condemn us. He come to get us out of the condemnation. Uh, therefore, it's in, it's in Romans 8 uh and one, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So them are that are in Christ Jesus, uh, there's no more condemnation that are in Christ Jesus. And if you're in Christ Jesus, like we said at the beginning, you're seated in the heavenlies. You're on the right hand of the Father. You're at rest with him. 
And, and, and that rest comes through faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So you're hearing and believing the word of God. So you just, you've got to understand that, uh, You've got to understand that God knows the best. God knows what's best for you. And if you'll follow that and live for, uh, for by his word, you, you, you'll have a better life. It, it's just uh, the way it is. You'll just have a better life because he uh, has come and he has lived among us and he showed us a, a better way. And he says... Uh, it says, uh, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil, because the things they were doing were evil and they wanted to keep doing them. So when there's no light, you know, when there's no light, when there's no revelation, when there's no uh, expression uh, of God, when there's no manifestation of God, when there's no presence of his spirit, you know, we can get together and we can uh, affirm one another in our in our lives and, and, and the things that we do and the things we do wrong and however we live. We can affirm one another. Uh, but if God's presence isn't there, what has it benefited us? He said, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so uh, we got to worship him in our spirit and in truth. And so we want to know truth. And so we look for that. And because and their deeds were evil, they didn't want the light. They wanted to, uh, uh, you know, do it and not, and not have anybody to say anything about it or, or it be exposed. You know, they wanted to be affirmed and say, well, no, what you're doing is right. What you're doing is okay. You can do that. Yeah, God still loves you. Well, God loves everybody. But the judgment of God is according to truth uh, against them that commit such things. And so uh, he wants to bring you out of darkness into light. He said, for everyone that doeth evil hates light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Uh, so he that doeth the truth loves the light. And, and so a lot of times I heard, uh, I was reading, uh, well, I heard it, I read it, and then I heard a couple of people comment on it and stuff. A pastor, a couple came up in a service and wanted to be prayed for. Uh, they were going to get married, and, and they wanted God's blessing on the marriage. And, and the minister asked them, said, have you been, you know, have you been sleeping together? And they, you know, they were offended, you know. <laughs> that, that offended them. He, he said, well, you need to separate and repent and then come back together. And, uh, and he said they turned around and uh, gave him a one finger wave and, and left the church because they, you know, he, he told them something that would help them, told them something, how they could uh, come out of that and how, to, how they could be blessed. And they really didn't want the blessing of God because if you really want the blessing of God, then you'll do what his word says. And when you do what his word says, then you'll receive the blessing of God. It's the same as if you wanted a garden and you sat in your house and every morning you got up and you said, I want a garden. God, I'm believing for a garden. And I'm just going to have the beautiful, and you could talk about it. You could speak and say, I'm having a beautiful garden this year. I'm going to have most beautiful, and you could go around telling everybody, you say, Oh, I'm going to have a beautiful garden this year. And they come by your house and the ground's not turned up. There's nothing planted. And they think you're crazy because you don't, you're saying that, but you don't have it. It's because you never got out and did what it requires to have a garden. So, and you reap, you got to get out and sow. And if you'd have sowed that garden, you would have had a garden. But a lot of people just want the blessing of God without doing what the word says. It doesn't work that way. You do what the word says, and then the blessing of God is like faith. Uh, people says, well, I believe it when I see it. Well, that's not faith. Faith is believing, and then you see it because it comes to pass. Because of our faith, we put our faith, and, and we believe that. And uh, John 12 and 31, he says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, 
will draw all. Uh, and the King James says men, but it's an italicized. That means it was added. Will draw all unto me. Well, what's the subject of the story he's talking about? Well, if you read it now, it's the judgment of this world. Now as the prince of this world be cast out, and I, if I be left up on earth, will draw all. Judgment is really what it should be. Uh, King James, they just added men because they thought, well, he'd draw all men too. And, and he does draw, you know, by the word, but he's talking about judgment. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all judgment unto myself. So he took the judgment upon himself. And so when he took the judgment on himself, the judgment of this world for sin, then when I believe upon him, he is my lamb. He's a sacrificial lamb. He's the one that took the punishment. He's the one that took all the sin. He became sin uh, for me. As it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, I believe it is, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so he drew all the judgment upon himself. And, and so, you know, uh, that's what we should do. And you say, well, what about, you know, people that, that do things and everything, you know, and they say, well, you should not judge. Well, the people in the church, you know, 1 Corinthians 5 and, and, and 12 and 6 and 2, he talks about uh, judging, you know, those that are inside the church. There was a man in, in, in the ch church and he had... You know, got with his stepmother and they were coming to church and, and Paul, you know, said, is there not a wise man among you? You know, this is wrong. You, you can't be doing this. This is not right. Have that among you, you know, put him out. And once they did and he repented, Paul said, take him back. But if they didn't ever put him out, he, if they'd affirmed him in it, he didn't never repent it. And then, and you know, Paul said, turn the flesh over to Satan that he might, might learn not to sin against, uh, you know, uh, the, the word. And so we take this thing of judging, you know, and, and, you know, we make it something it's, it's not, we're not condemning the person. Uh, when somebody is doing something openly, uh, we're not condemning the person. We don't condemn the person. Uh, you know, what should we do? Well, we should love them. We should show them love and we should speak to them. Uh, the words of God and speak to them the good things of God and tell them how the good things of God. He, he said, uh, he said, do you spy the riches of his goodness and forbearance of long suffering, not knowing the goodness of God leads you to repentance? So we need these people to see the goodness of God. They, they've seen the, you know, there's pleasure in sin for a season, but that season never lasts as long. And they may be in that season of, of, of pleasure and sin. And, but there's coming a time when it won't be pleasurable and we are to be there to tell them, hey, there's, there's a better way. Hey, I used to look for that, you know, I used to look for uh, satisfaction and all them things, but I never found it. But what I have found it in, and see, they got to not hear it, just hear it from you. They got to see it in us. They got to see that smile on your face, the joy in your heart and your love in your heart, you know, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost and it's just filled us and we just love on those people. And, and you know, that always bothered me more than somebody saying, oh, you ain't worth nothing. Look at what you're doing. You're sorry. You know, I kind of expected that, but you know, it was those people that just loved me regardless and spoke good to me and, and told me that there's a better way and there's somebody else that loved me and his name was Jesus and he died for me that I could come out of that because I was in darkness and I thought the way I was living was the only way to live. I thought that was the high life. And I thought that was the good way. This is how you live. This is what you do. But I found out different through his word and through the Holy Spirit and through other people that showed me these things. You know, I thought it was in religion. I thought, it well, as long as you get up and you go to church and and, you know, and you read the Bible every now and then, you pray all the time, you know, you'll be okay, you know. Uh, but there was no satisfaction in that. It's through a relationship. There's nothing wrong with those things I mentioned as long as the attitude in your heart is doing it out of a, a uh, you know, relationship or a fellowship with him. You know, as long as you're doing it like that and not just out of a duty, uh, you know, I've got to do this so I can make it to heaven. I've got to do this or something bad's going to happen to me. No, no, you do it out of fellowship and a relationship through 
Jesus Christ and through God the Father. And this is how we, we live and we operate because Jesus took all the judgment upon him. And so we are to be uh, loving on these people, pulling them out of the fire and showing them a better, a better life and a better way. Uh, you know, you know, I've seen people, you know, and it, you know, when I got into church and everything and was doing the religious thing, I saw people that were filled with the Holy Ghost and I know there was a difference in their life and there was something different about them than there was me. And I thought, well, I'm saved. I go to church and I've been baptized and all these things, but they got something I didn't have. You know, they had the fullness and they were full of love no matter what went on. And I seen some of them go through some things and people say hurtful things about them and to them and they just kept on loving. And I thought, man, I, I don't have that. You say that to me, I, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to retaliate. retaliate. I'm going to get you back. You know, I'll do something to them or I hope they get what's coming to them. I don't think that way anymore. You know, they live and they do and they say these things. I pray they see the light. I, I pray they overcome those things, you know. Uh, John 9, 35, Jesus heard that they had cast the blind man out, that he had healed, and uh, the Pharisees cast him out. <laughs> and they couldn't figure out, hey, was he born blind? Was he not? And they said, yeah, he was born blind. And they got his parents in there. Yeah, he was born blind. And they said, well, tell us again. He said, well, will you be his disciples? And they said, we're Moses' disciples. We believe in that law. And they kicked him out. And he said, Doest thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? He said, Thou hast both seen him. It's he that talks with thee. He said, Lord, I believe and worship him. Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world. Judgment, that word judgment there is a little different. That word judgment should, uh, should have been thanked for the decision. I, I am come to this world that they which uh, see not might see and that they which see might be made blind. For, for a decision. He said, for a decision, for judgment, I've come into this world. A decision. See, he is coming to the world. Now you got to make a decision. Is he who he says he is? Is he the son of God? Is he the healer? Is he the, uh, the Alpha and Omega? Is he the King of Kings? Is he the Lord of Lords? Is he the a Messiah? Is he the one that was to come? Is he the one that was dead and now is alive? Is that him? You got to make a decision and you got to say, that's him. I believe that's him. And when you believe that, and when you say that, then you are to follow that way. You are to go that way headlong and just follow after it. Uh, and you know, people say, well, it ain't easy. Yeah, it's easy. It's the easiest thing you've ever done. Make that decision and go that way. You know, he said, take my yoke upon me, my on you. Yeah, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. He said, it's easy and it's light. Go in the way of the world. Go in your own way. That's the hard way. That's when it gets tough. That's when it gets difficult. That's when things don't, don't do right. You know, it's, it's a hard road. It, you know, just because it's a broad way and everybody's going that way, it don't, it don't, it ain't that, it ain't good. You say, well, I've got a lot of people on that road, on this broad road, be a help, help to you. No, they won't help you. They'll stampede you. They'll walk upon you because they're out for themselves. Uh, the narrow way, that's the way you're to go. It leads to life. It leads to life. And few be there that find it. But you can find it. You can if you want to. It's there for you. It's through his word and through the Holy Spirit that God will draw you unto himself, uh, that he can show you who he really is, show you his true nature of who he really is. And when you know him, that's when everything's going to uh, turn out better in your life. That's when you, you, you can love everybody and not be worried about what they're doing or uh, ain't doing, you know, that's when you can just go, you know, hey, you know, it's all going to work out. It's all going to be all right. It, God's going to take care of it, you know. If somebody does something to you, you know, you just, vengeance is his. I don't repay. That's up to him. And if he's long-suffering and merciful unto them, that's fine too because the goodness of God. I, I, I don't go against his goodness. I like his goodness. David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good, David said. And David had been through some 
things in his life. But he said, God's good. God's good. And you know, David, in his early years, he, he mimicked that. He mimicked God said he was a man after mine own heart. He mimicked that. He could have killed Saul one time when he come into a cave, but he didn't. He cut the hem of his robe off or his garment. He, he told Saul, and that even hurt David. David, it bothered him that he even cut the hem of it off. And here Saul is trying to kill David for no reason. David had never done nothing bad for him. David was do, always doing good, but David wouldn't retaliate. And when Saul died, David didn't rejoice. David wept. Him and his men that were hiding out, they couldn't even go home, wept when they heard that Saul and Jonathan had died in battle. And man, the man that said he had killed Saul, he said, I fell upon him because he was wounded and I know he couldn't make it. He said, how is it that you thought lightly to lay your hand to God's anointed? And David had one of his men said, fall upon him. And that cost that man that life because he didn't care for those things. But David respected the anointing. He respected uh, that man of God. He said he was once the anointed of God, and I'll not lay my hand to him. And he wanted to see Saul do well. He wanted to see him exceed. That was a uh, David, that was the love that he had. And see, I want that for people. I want to see you succeed. I want you to do well. And I found out the way to do that, and it's through the Word of God. And it's to tell you the, about the Word of God and tell you about the love and show you uh, the love of God and, and show you how it works in my life. And, and so this is what I want for everyone. I want to see them uh, be in health and prosper even as their soul prospers. But you've got to get your mind, will, and emotions involved in the Word of God and studying out what He has for you. And uh, we just praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy in our lives and what he is doing, his long suffering and mercy. And, you know, there's people living in sin today and, and, and it seems like nothing's happening to them. Everything may be going right. Every time they do something, everything goes good. That's the mercy of God. That's the long suffering of God. That's the goodness of God. And you will rejoice that maybe one day they'll see the goodness of God. You'll say, God, just... Just pour out your goodness upon them, them that are out there living in sin. Pour out your goodness that they may see, you know, that the goodness of God that would lead them to repentance, that lead them to change their mind about who you are. And so they could, they could see the goodness of God and spend eternity uh, with you. I God bless you, friends, tonight. I love you, and I pray blessings upon you and your life and uh, your family, that you may prosper and be in health, and uh, that you may have uh, wisdom and understanding uh, in the things of God, and that you may overcome in everything in your life. In Jesus' name, we'll see you next time.